So I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. The time is 6.30 p.m. Our first order of business will be approve the last two meetings minutes from July 22nd and July 29th. I motion we approve the minutes from July 22nd and July 29th. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes from our last two meetings. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing. Thank you, Margaret. All righty, our first order of business, which I'm very excited about. Um, Chief Benjamin is here to talk to us about a very exciting opportunity for us. Indeed, thank you. Absolutely. Joining me here this evening, immediately, not sure how it will show up on the TV, <laughs> you folks to my left <laughs> is Adam Rome from the Belchtown Police Department, He's a dog trainer. Mm -hmm. and further on is Matt Mannheim, one of our firefighters, and the owner of the dog we're here to talk about this evening, Ranger. And we figured that we'd have uh, Matt would say a couple of things that he's got prepared, and then if you have questions or We'll just let the conversation go from there. We've got a couple of photos too, but we'll let, uh, yeah. let Matt start with a couple of. Would you like to see the picture? Or? I would love to see a picture of a dog. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this is Ranger. He's a four year old German Shepherd. He is known for his goofy side. Um, by anybody that knows him, he's extremely friendly. He likes the to help with construction projects. Um, when he's when he's not working, he is usually sitting with his tongue out and he's wagging. I see you there. Yeah. <laughs> Those um, ears, so cute. Mm -hmm. I heard he talks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing before we get started. Uh, we're sort of hemming on, do we, do we burn range or do we not? Uh, but one of the things <laughs> Bear in mind is he's a he's a search and rescue dog. He's not really a therapy dog. Mm -hmm. So while he's gentle, he's young and he is a little restless. So he might be a little distraction to us all in here. And he can start to talk when he feels he's not being. Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so take it away, Matt. All right. So Ranger's a nationally certified search and rescue canine. He's biannually certified and tested for drug meat canine in both urban and wilderness terrain meaning he can locate um, missing persons based off of their scent in cities as well as mountain terrain. Um, I hold a $500,000 liability bodily harm and property damage policy on him through Evolution Insurance Brokers. He also has health and accident insurance through, through Panion. I have prepared hold harmless agreements um, releasing liability from the town of Sunderland or any of his mutually partners. All liability for Ranger or his actions will be accepted by myself. Um, all expenses related to or incurred by Ranger are covered by myself. It will not cost anybody anything. Any questions? Yeah, just, just quick. Is that normal for a, you know, an employee to have hold of a liability? So it is <laughs> in this case because of the fact that I'm maintaining ownership over him. Okay. And so if he was if he was owned by the department, it, yeah. would, be, it would be common for the department to have insurance. But since he's not, um, he's a usable asset of mm -hmm. the department, he's yeah. a private he, while he's privately owned, um, that's normal for my situation. Okay. Adam, um, could you describe how that dynamic works a little bit? Maybe the difference, it's a good point, between privately owned dogs and then dogs that are owned owned by a municipality? If that's even sure. Right. sure. Um, I'm in a little bit of a different situation. I'm a full-time employee for the town of Belchertown. I currently work three dogs for the town. Um, they are the property of the town because I need them to be covered by the town's liability policy. They, one of my dogs is a patrol utility canine, so we do like the building search, the area search, we're out looking for um, people that were possibly involved in a, a felony, that sort of stuff. So there's a, a higher degree of risk that comes with that. So it's nice to have that town umbrella to sure. cover everybody, everybody that's involved. Ranger's a, a different, type of a dog here. This is a search and rescue dog. He wants to find people and he wants hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's his forte right there. Um, and it's a little bit of a different dynamic. Matt is call for, correct? Yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's not in the station 8 to 16 hours a day like I am in my agency. So it's just a little bit of a different dynamic. But it's the same in the end. You're going to get a, a very good um, level of service from what this dog is capable of, especially with all the 
recreation venues that you have around the area and all the people that go out at night and don't want to bring anything but a phone with 3% uh, power and no flashlight. So Rangers up to that stuff for sure. Well, and we also have something like a third of the square footage, or square miles of Sunderland is a mountain. So yeah, I mean, right. a lot of people who go hiking up there and get yeah, themselves sure. lost or injured. And, yeah. and has you know. he been tested on yes. search and rescue? Yes. Yes. Yep. He, he is currently certified. Um, oh, I meant, I'm sorry. Has he had practical experience with search and rescue? So he, we, we, have, we have been called out once how it was for a missing juvenile. Um, luckily, the missing juvenile was found. Uh, within seven yards of where they went missing as Ranger and I were showing up. Um, however, our training is quite extensive. We've trained in every scenario that you can imagine. Um, and it's it's real world. It's, um, you know, here's a mountain, go take a walk. I don't want to know where you went. Don't bring a phone. And then Ranger and I will find them miles away. Um, it, um, I think I'm a better way to describe that maybe I could. So that, like what Matt's describing here, the training never ends for these dogs. I have a dog right now that's in the car waiting for me to get out of here. <laughs> He's going to be 11 years old in September. I train with him the same way I trained with him when he was four years old. I, I make things a little bit easier now because he is senior, but he still wants to go out and still wants to track. Um, there's a, a seminar that's coming up this fall. They're going to um, be taxiing in an aircraft and then deploy to go to work from that. That's not something I'm probably going to see in my municipality, but I'm definitely going to take advantage of the opportunity to go do it. So, um, like Matt was saying, it's a continual evolution. If we can put them on boats, deploy into the river, that sort of stuff, you, you have to do, you have to train in the areas where you may be called to work. I had an, uh, an opportunity last week to work with my youngest dog, who's only six months old right now, he's not certified, but we had a drone up. And that was a new thing for him because, like, oh man, there's a giant dragon fly up there and it's following us. <laughs> so, new sight picture, but definitely, you know, took advantage of it and we'll work it into future stuff. So. Another, another thing to add to that real quick is that Ranger is retested and recertified biannually. And so, so twice a year, every year, we'll have to retest um, to the certification standard. And the certification standard that we do, because he is specifically search and rescue, it's a, um, it is, four times the average um, police canine standard for tracking. Um, the normal standard would be a quarter mile for the North American Police Work Dog to be certified one mile with um, a lot more um, contamination. And when I say contamination, what that means is picture a busy sidewalk or a popular hiking trail where it's not just one person has gone through, it's one person has gone through and then um, after that upwards of 15 people have gone through and, and, and there's a lot of scent discrimination so not only does he have to follow the human scent trail, but he also has to be able to discriminate um, the missing individual scent from everybody else who has passed through. Mm. Mm. That's an invaluable asset to the town. Do you do you make Ranger available to other towns? Should they need search and rescue? So um, that's part of the reason that we're here, is Ranger is not currently a dispatchable asset. And so um, that was something that we wanted to get, um, you know, let you guys know about and um, essentially Say, hey, we're doing this, and uh, make sure it's okay with you guys because of the fact that um, we want to put him as a dispatchable asset for um, to be available for other towns through through Fire. And when, when that came to me a couple of years ago and, and told me about uh, about Ranger, and we we on the department we'd met Ranger before, but when he told me about the training that he wanted to go through, the attributes that Ranger had displayed, sort of those traits that really made it. Good idea to go through the training. He asked about, well, could Sunderland use them? And my first question was, well, what, what's the training going to be like? And when I learned that it was essentially the same training as a as a professional dog handler would have for a similar dog. And as I started to started to understand things a little more, um, I said, absolutely. Once once Rangers uh, passed all his tests and got the stake. Been, been, uh, uh, been at that level, let me know and we can inform the select board of what we have because it's, it's, um, it takes a lot of time and dedication. Matt spends, it's probably an under, understatement, but at least a day a week, one day out of seven, training with Ranger. And um, 
I've helped, I've had my son help the, the you know, people that he's tracked. And he's been able to track some pretty remarkable uh, tracks, some good hiding places uh, into barns and buildings and getting, uh, getting the, that, his handler and anybody else's with him close enough so you could clearly see if there was somebody that was hiding or in the underbrush or what have you. Uh, so ultimately, we knew that the, the ranger wouldn't be a secret for very long. Mm -hmm. He started to become known and word got out, so we wanted to let you know uh, what we have. So you didn't read it in the newspaper or something. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. You know, a, 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 a canine in Sunderland finding a, you know, finding a missing person on Mount Toby wanted you to hear it here first, that that could happen. Well, we certainly appreciate that. Um, I, don't, I think it's a wonderful asset for the town to have, and also if we can get it, you know, added to our list of, of deployable assets, being able to do mutual aid, you know, in other surrounding towns is great also. I mean, thank you so much for all the work on this. We really appreciate that. Um, I know how fun dogs are, and so work is, you know, <laughs> qualified a little bit there. Um, but, you know, we really appreciate you bringing that asset to the town, and we appreciate you helping to, you know, work with him on that asset. Um, does other members of the board have any questions before we... I don't know, do, uh, do we need to vote to oh, no, uh, do no, anything no. or just uh, informational? Yeah, purely yeah. informational. Cool. Yeah. Not asking for anything. Whatever. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Any questions from the other members of the board for about, about anything about this? Um, well, the only question that pops into my head is the training cost. It must, it must <laughs> cost you a fair amount to do that, right? I mean. <laughs> um, yes, yes and no. Um, it's in. I'll put it this way. Um, it's it's the time to do it. Yeah. But it's it's also something that I'm very passionate about. Okay. And I'll I'll, I'll put it like this. Um, our entire department is filled with individuals that what they want to provide is public service. They want to help people. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is no different than training any other aspect of the fire department. Um, the reason I got started in this was um, firefighting, in its essence, is the art of problem solving. Um, we see a problem, how can we fix it? Sure. We have hoses, we have water, we can put out a fire, we have extrication tools for a car accident, we have pumps, somebody's basement floods. Well, the first time I, we had a missing hiker, um, I realized that there was a little bit of a gap in that, tool. how we fix this. And so I drove into it and found the world of search and rescue. And I was already heavily in dog training at that time with Ranger. Okay. And I realized the solution was right over my nose. And so with this, I can kind of fill a gap that I saw before and say, this is a complete service that our department can provide to our local community. All right. Well. So wait, you're, you're telling me that the volunteer fire department's not doing it for the money? <laughs> oh my <laughs> no, I mean, and, and that's one of the things that we, that just not to soapbox, but that's one of the things we love about our, our fire department is the, the dedication that the members have to not just the department itself and the health and well-being of all of our citizens, but also to the town at large with your work on the town park and all that. Like it really is, yeah, we really appreciate everything you guys do. So thank you for that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else from the board? No, nope, I'm good. Okay. My only last thing is just at some point I need to meet that dog. So <laughs> have to make that happen. Absolutely. So thank you guys very much. We really appreciate it. And also coming in and telling us about it and the information yeah. and all that. Um, very interesting stuff. Very good stuff. And great for the town. I'm sure you're going to go to the elementary school at some time soon, right? Yeah. yeah great. Great. Sure. great. <laughs> you'll, you'll see us around. We'll do canine dem demonstrations. Put on, a, put on a demo of tracking and how he works and things like that. Excellent. Thanks. Cool. Right. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. all. All right. Our next order of business is the Plum Tree Road property donation. I'm going to ask the board to defer that to your meeting on August, I believe it's 26th. Um, we are very close to being, being ready uh, for the board to, to vote on this, um, read the deed and vote on it. However, we need a little information from the Conservation Commission because you're going to affirm the Conservation Commission's vote on this. Yeah. And we also need confirmation from the uh, developer or from Natural Heritage and Endangered Species that it's not a select board hearing that's required, that the board can actually do this at a meeting. So I'm waiting for those two okay. pieces and you should be ready in two weeks. Perfect. Okay. Then we will defer that for two weeks. Um, Next up is signing the September 3rd, 2024 state primary warrant. So every uh, time there's an election or a primary, we have the uh, lovely duty and honor of signing the warrants that go out. Um, 
so that Wendy can conduct an election. Um, so for this one, this is for the September 3rd primary for the presidential and otherwise elections this fall. Um, and this is just a, uh, I think we need to make a motion to approve and then we will sign and whatnot. So are there any questions on this from the board? All right. Not, not that we haven't done this a thousand times before, so <laughs> uh, in that case, I would entertain a motion uh, to approve the uh, state primary warrant as presented. I motion we approve the state primary warrant as presented. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the state primary warrant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Margaret. Okay. All right. That one was easy. Um, next up, we have a related item where I need to appoint the election officers. Uh, for a term starting on September 1st, 2024, and going through the last day of August 2025. Do you have a list for us on those? Um, or? You, we do have a list. Um, I'll, I'll read it, and the board can just approve the slate. Um, Great. I'll read the names for you, and then you can vote it as a slate. Democrats, Barbara Howey, Kimberly Wisman, Mary Gunderson, Christine Drake, Ronald Howey, Stana Wheeler, Michelle Burgess, Liz Sillen. Republicans, Deborah Bennett, William Sillen, Pam Parsons, Donna McKenney. Unenrolled, Carol Cushai, Jennifer Uncles. Out of town, Olivia Leone, <laughs> Leone uh, Catherine Olmstadt, Margaret Nardowitz, Russell Cranshaw, and high school students, McCavery Burgess. Oh, yeah, McCavery. McCavery, yes. So, and the board, again, can vote these as a slate. Again, the term of office is September 1, 2024 to August 31st, 2025. Wonderful. Motion, motion to approve the selection, so, uh, sorry, the election officials as a slate. Uh, yeah, so fall. just for disclosure, Christine Drake is my mother, <laughs> yeah. um, but there's should be no conflict of interest for me to vote for this. So I second. Wonderful. Um, and just before we vote, just want to say um, my kids grew up with McCavery. They're the same age and same class and been through it all together. He is a wonderful, wonderful young man. I'm very happy to see him being involved in this, and that makes me so tickled. Excellent. Uh, students so. ages 16 and over can actually work elections. So. They absolutely can. So for any of our uh, <laughs> any of our students out there who are in that 16 to 17 year old range, uh, it's a great opportunity to get involved before you can officially vote, at least so far. <laughs> that will be hopefully coming soon. All right. Um, in that case, um, at this time, I'd enter, or we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you. All right. Um, next up, we have recommendations to appoint Select Board Administrative Assistant. Yes, um, I conducted interviews of four different candidates on August 1st and August 12th. Um, and uh, while all the candidates um, have their unique qualifications, one did stand out. And so therefore, um, I recommend that Melanda Williams, um, Mel Williams, who also, by the way, serves on the town's Board of Health, be appointed to the position of administrative assistant to the select board and town administrator. I've added to this rec uh, recommendation, I ask the select board to change the title of the position to administrative assistant to the select board and town administrator because that position works on a day-to-day -day basis with the town administrator or through the town administrator for the board. Yep. Um, so yes, that's my recommendation. Um, Melanda will work 30 hours a week. This is a benefited, non-exempt position. Her, the rate of pay at time of hire will be $29 an hour. And this is on grade C of the town's compensation plan. Her regular working hours will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Thursday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And she will receive leave and other benefits in accordance with the personnel bylaws. Great. Any questions from the board? So there's no conflict of interest with her board of health position? Not at all. Perfect. Nope. Great. Anything again? No, no. All right, wonderful. We appreciate you taking care of that. This was, as we had said when you when you started, this was one of our top priorities was filling these positions. So we really appreciate that you have taken that bull by the horns and, and done that work for one us. Down, one down. One down, exactly. <laughs> um, so at this time, I would entertain a motion what? to... Uh, uh, ex just so you have the name. <laughs> oh, okay. To um, accept the uh, recommendation um, from our town administrator to both um, appoint... Um, Melinda Williams to the position of to the position and also rename said position to uh, uh, assistant to the select board and town administrator. Right. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion to appoint Melinda Williams to the position of administrative assistant to the select board and town administrator. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to appoint Melinda Williams and also change the name of the position. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you very much. And if Linda's listening, congratulations, and welcome aboard, and we look forward to working with you. Do you have an anticipated start date for that? I, I 
I've spoken with her. It is a two weeks maximum. Um, if she needs to give her employer that kind of notice, it would be two weeks. Um, if she is able, she will start sooner. So she's able to train closely with Cindy. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Thank you much. And I see that uh, Mel's on the, on the call. So thank you very much. And congratulations. And we look forward to working with you. Yes. All right. I've got the video. I oh. don't know why it's not up. <laughs> yep. Oh, well. Okay. The fun of uh, small town municipal politics in a, <laughs> in a digital world. What do you know? <laughs> all right. So that is uh, wonderful news. Uh, congratulations and thank you all for that one. Um, next up is uh, approving Chapter 90 reimbursement application. Good. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, Nathaniel, um, in my absence, um, this happened after I left work Thursday, August 1st, uh, for a week. Um, George did contact Nathaniel. There was reimbursement paperwork that needed to go in sure. imminently. Um, Nathaniel signed it, and I asked the board. I asked the board to just ratify Nathaniel's signature on that reimbursement. Yep. That was one of those situations where if we didn't get it in, it was many thousands of dollars that the town wouldn't be reimbursed for. Um, so I kind of went on a limb and assumed that you guys would <laughs> back me on that particular one. Um, but we did want to bring it to the, the board's attention. Um, it was just, th it needed a, a town official signature for the application for reimbursement. Um, not dispersing anything or anything like that. It was just yeah. so that they could put the application in. And we had a very strict deadline of we, we couldn't wait until even the following Monday because it was going to be a problem. So yeah. um, not a huge deal, but public meeting, members of the board want to make sure everyone was aware. Yeah. So I would ask um, for a motion um, and a vote on ratifying the, the chair's signature on that Chapter 90 reimbursement application. That way we can formalize it. Motion to ratify the chair's signature on the Chapter 90 reimbursement. Second. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we have a motion made and seconded to ratify my signature on the application for the Chapter 90 reimbursement. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank Good you very much. question. Is there a way to put that into the town administrator's court so we don't have to? I, I think those, I think the reimbursement to. applications absolutely ab right. actually right. require yeah. the okay. uh, chief executive okay. office. No, it, it's, it's, there's a handful of things like yeah, that. that you're right. Yeah. We, we, you have to have the, the chair sign. Um, Nothing in the world, but good question. But. Yeah, good question for sure. Um, all right, and then um, we have another item on here, which is a recommendation to appoint board of health clerk. Yes, um, I am presenting a recommendation. Oh, actually, I'm I'm in support of a recommendation made by the board of health to appoint Nicole Pagan as the board of health clerk. She currently serves as the assessor's assistant, working Mondays and Wednesdays for a total of 14 hours a week. Um, this position, the Board of Health Clerk, would be a five-hour a week uh, non-benefited position, uh, leaving her combination of positions as non-benefited at 19 hours a week. The rate of pay um, for this particular position is $24 an hour. This is a different rate of pay than her assessor's assistant position, but she's going to be submitting two separate, uh, separate uh, uh, pay schedules each week, or uh, bi-weekly. This is a position on grade B of the town's compensation plan and her regular working hours for the Board of Health Clerk will be Tuesdays, five hours, and the office hours will be set by the Board of Health. Okay, great. Um, she does work for the assessors, um, again, Mondays and Wednesdays. So she will be here three days a week. Great. Any questions about that from the board? All right, at this time I would entertain a motion to, uh, do you want us to accept the recommendation or confirm uh, the recommendation? Motion to appoint. Motion there, to appoint. Always, All right. Yeah. At this time, I would entertain a motion to appoint, then. A motion we appoint Nicole Pagan as the Board of Health Clerk. Second. All right. At this time, we have a motion made and seconded to appoint Nicole Pagan as the Board of Health Clerk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Margaret. Excellent. So that was our last order of new business. Next up, we have some old business. The first item of old business is the Town Administrator Search. And an update from Margaret on how that's going. Okay. So, um... Two weeks ago, I, I sent you all the um, draft ideal candidate profile and challenge statement and just asked that you look it over and let me know if you have any questions. Um, I, I didn't receive any questions. I'm hoping that it looks okay to you because this is the document that we'll use alongside the job description to post the position. I've alerted Deb Radway um, that once the board approves, uh, votes on this uh, profile and challenge statement, we'll be ready to, we'll be ready to post. Um, and she's going to assist me with that. She's going to post in a bunch of different venues. 
So from my perspective, everything you sent over looked great. Uh, I had no notes or complaints or additions or anything like that. Um, anything from Dan or Crystal? No, no. I thought it was That's good. very nice. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, do you need a just a simple vote to accept it? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the ideal candidate uh, profile and challenge statement for the common ministry research. I motion we approve the ideal candidate profile and challenge statement and I guess what? Post the job as? So the job can be posted. So yes. the job can be posted in a timely manner. Second. Right. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the ideal candidate profile and challenge statement so the job can be posted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Margaret. Thank you. All right. Um, up next, we have a uh, ARPA request for from the police department for premium pay. Um, just for some context, the ARPA funds were uh, a bill that was approved in the beginning of the pandemic to provide funding for um, the town to meet shortfalls related to the pandemic and help towns and municipalities make it through um, all the troubles of the pandemic. Um, that money was not specifically earmarked for anything per se, although there were a lot of recommendations and guidelines included. Um, and one of the things that was allowed but not required was uh, the payment of ARPA premium pay to uh, employees of the town that worked in customer, or, sorry, in um, public facing positions during the pandemic. Um, there was a request that we received from the police department a couple, six months ago, nine months ago, something like that. Um, and uh, this is a, another request from them uh, for the ARPA funds. Um, for context for everybody, um, our current balance on that account is something like, yeah, thank you, is uh, $4,922.56. Um, in an ideal world, from my perspective, in an ideal world, um, there would have been enough money to do all the things we needed to do and have money to give money to everybody. But that's not an ideal world, and we are a small town, um, and largely those funds are what's gotten this small town through the last four years. Um, and unfortunately, that is sort of where it is. Um, and the board has discussed it, and the, the um, recommendation from the town administrator, um, which we have here and is posted on our website, um, is given the state of our financial situation with the ARPA funds remaining, um, is to not go ahead with any, any premium pay, not only for the police department, but for any other town employees. Um, any discussion on that end that Dan or Crystal would like to have? No, I mean, we're, we're down to not a lot left and we I think uh, you know employees all employees who worked through the pandemic uh, municipal employees and otherwise um, deserve recognition and appreciation and uh, there is just with the limited funds it, it makes it impossible to actually reward with with money um, in in this, in this case all right um, any other final notes on that one? Um, and we did forward this letter um, to the, the requesters. All right. Um, next up is select board. Uh, oh, sorry. I do have to have, we'll, we'll have to have a, a vote on this. Oh, right. Um, I can go ahead and read it for you, and then you could just. Uh, that would be great. Thank you. Make a motion. Second. Um, my recommendation, uh, due to everything that, that the chair explained, I recommend that the select board deny the police department's ARPA premium pay request and that ARPA premium pay bonuses not be awarded to any Sunderland municipal employee. So I didn't or you'd entertain a motion so, on that yes. one. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the town administrator in regards to the ARPA funds. I motion that the ARPA request, uh, as read by Margaret, um, that the request is unable to be fulfilled at this time. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to um, accept the recommendation from the town administrator to um, not accept the request for ARPA funds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, three nothing. All right, um, I do want to also just reiterate that the town appreciates everything that, that all of our employees um, and uh, as well as volunteers and members of the town and community did. Um, it was a lot of work that lots of people came together in order to get us to where we are today and it is much appreciated um, all across the board. All right, uh, next up is select board updates. Dan, do you have anything for us today? Uh, not a lot. Um, I do have, let's see, I know we have the uh, EDM studio meeting for the Board of Oversight for Senior Senate, Senior Senate Committee, and that's uh, Wednesday night. I, I 
think it's five o'clock, but I'm not sure. I think that's right. And then I guess Lauren can speak to the Village Center Committee. I know that's on Thursday night, right? Thursday night, yep. yep. What time? That's at? 6.30. 6.30. So Village Center on 6.30 on Thursday. Wonderful. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so awful. Awful. Yeah, okay, so we can stand and get a <laughs> ah, <laughs> um, wonderful. And, and I'll, I'll ask for public comment. And if you could please give us some more information at that time, that'd be great. All right. Anything else from you, Dan? Or no. uh, Crystal, any uh, um, like updates? South County EMS. Um, they actually swore in five new per diems today. There's some pictures on their Facebook page of the swearing in. They had a nice little ceremony over in South Deerfield. Um, and the per diems, just as a reminder, they help supplement the full-time paramedics and EMTs that run that South County, or, you know, that work on that South County. And, you know, the per diems are a great asset, and, mm -hmm. you know, we're happy to have five more people helping out over there. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that. That is great news. Uh, for myself, I don't have a lot. Uh, I did have a brief conversation with the head of the um, Cliffside Tenants Association. Um, who will be making requests in the fall to come in and talk to us about their efforts there. Um, the tenants of the Cliffside Apartments are uh, forming a tenant association in order to have um, better luck with negotiating with the management around um, some maintenance issues they're having. So we'll have more information about that coming up. Uh, and that's it for me for Select Board Updates. Margaret, Town Administrative Updates. I only have two today. Um, first, the Clark and Green contract for the Graves Library that the Select Board awarded on July 15th. I have followed up with the principal. Um, Jeff had previously sent the contract to him and asked him to review it. I have not heard back from him. At this point, the select board just needs to sign. Again, you've already voted to award it. So once the um, once Clark and Green has done their review and they get it back to us, we'll be able to execute that. Um, the Montessori has notified the town of their annual camp out here. That's going to be held on Thursday, September 5th. There will be two adults and seven students. They'll be canoeing from Turner's to Northampton. Um, I have already sent their request to use the field behind uh, the area behind the baseball field um, to police and recreation, and both departments have okayed the request and they've been made aware. So, Great. Uh, just something to. That was my only question was going to be just to make sure that the police were aware so if there's yeah. something happened, there wasn't a surprise there. So, yes. good to hear about that. I'm glad to. Here that's happening. Wonderful. All right, um, that should end our old business. Um, we have no correspondence. Next up, we have public comment, uh, and we'll get to people on the screen in a second. But first, um, would you like to give us some information about the? Uh, I, I just came to see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, Dan's uh, going to the bus. So no, yeah. we do have. I mean, with a uh, glad to see Margaret here, but with an interim uh, part time. Administrator, we do have some issues. One is we have our meeting Thursday is a hybrid meeting, and we, we need some assistance getting it uh, activated. Um, so just things like that can't fall through the cracks. Um, I'm glad that we're awarding the contract to Clark and Green. That was a job that Jeff was basically going to kind of administer with Michael Lunas and I helping him. So kind of feeling like that wall is going to be in my court until we get a new administrator, so get to work. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Well, thank you. Um, and if you end up needing some support on that from the board, just let us know and we will do what we can. Just a question. Is there anybody else who knows how to run all this stuff? Look who could stay. Well, who could stay unfortunately, no. no. I had Aaron Babel here assisting me today. I had the executive director of FCAT assisting me, and we were all just kind of <laughs> yeah, you know, was trying Aaron, to. Was Aaron able to do it? He was. He was. He was very good. I, but we couldn't get beyond this. In fact, this is just not sufficient. So I, um, we're going to have to figure out something else. I, I and I don't feel like I don't know how to start a town. I can't obviously start a town meeting from my computer. Someone. Mm -hmm. Uh, the yeah. Zoom, um, I may be able to help you with that. Um, uh, we do have a commitment on Thursday night, but I, I, I think, but if that changes, I'd be able to help you. Um, and maybe I could turn over hosting duties to you, so once it's up, you'd be able to just yeah. record it. And, uh, 
close the meeting, but uh, I'll do what I can to, to help. I'll let you know. And I'll brainstorm a little bit also on, um, anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get it working before Thursday, um, and we'll do our best. And if we have to reach out to, to the former town administrator to ask him a couple <laughs> questions. I, I, he, he did make it clear that if we had a handful of small questions we needed to ask him on this, this might be one of those. So. Um, we will we will certainly do that. So the the, the consultant is coming <coughs> through Zoom. They're coming remotely, so okay. we really need. Yeah, we have to have. Them. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, like if Aaron can figure out how to do it, I don't know. If it's well, if we could, we hire him for you know a couple hours and pay him, pay him overtime. Is this something we could do? I don't know. I'm certainly willing to do it though. I don't see why. I don't see why we couldn't do that. We might. Or or switch hours or whatever whatever works. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah. Let, let's let's talk. Um, the email to tomorrow to make sure we get that taken care of. It'd be good to have somebody just. I mean, I do a lot of Zoom stuff now more yep. than I ever used to, but um, yeah, it's good to have someone who knows how to do it. Great. Um, and I can't actually see whether we have people online who are wanting to talk. Margaret, do we have anybody online who's looking to? I don't see um, I any don't hands see up or any, anything. I see no hands raised. If anyone online wants last to chance. Talk. Yeah, last <laughs> chance. <laughs> All right. No well, hands. we're not hearing any hands. Not hearing any uh, want to unmute themselves. Oh, we do have somebody. Uh, Ooh, excellent. Who do we have? Do we? Oh no, he's just saying hi. It's Chris Larrabee, and his his video is actually up for the board's information. <laughs> hi, Chris. Thank you for joining us. As always, we always appreciate having you along, um, and we always appreciate the lovely articles you write about our town. So, thank you for having having thank you for being here. Um, anything else from anyone online? I don't think I see any hands. So. I know. In that case, I will close public comment. Um, and our next meeting will be on Monday, August 26th at our normal 6.30 time. At this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn for the night. I motion we adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, and it is 7.08.